Welcome to Automation World's Technology Matters. In this episode, we'll look at a new report that outlines key steps around the industrial Internet of Things that many manufacturers overlook. We'll also explore how to assess your cybersecurity readiness and look into how Volkswagen is creating an app store for its plants populated by apps created by Volkswagen's own automation technology partners. So, for this episode, let's begin with this new report from PMMI's business intelligence titled Automation Timeline, the drive toward 4.0 connectivity in packaging and processing. Now, the report points out, of course, how individual machines need to be set up to easily link up with a larger industrial Internet of Things network in order to implement a viable Industry 4.0 strategy. Now, based on research of consumer packaged goods manufacturers, PMMI found that most have identified only a small portion of their plant floor operations as being fully IIoT enabled. But in the next five years, the leading CPGs expect to have 75% of their machines capable of collecting critical machine performance data. Now, this 75% number represents, of course, a big leap forward when you consider that in 2017, CPGs estimated that only 15% of their lines were IIoT ready, and while this number rose to 30% for leading CPGs and 24% for small to medium-sized CPG manufacturers in 2020, this means that on average today, any given CPG manufacturing operation will have 73% of its lines not fully connected or integrated. So that makes for a significant chasm to be crossed to achieve the expected 75% level of IIoT connectivity expected for CPG leaders by 2025. So to help manufacturers reach these numbers, this report from PMMI's Business Intelligence covers the current effects of COVID on automation choices, as well as how the application of robots, artificial intelligence and machine learning, remote access, predictive analytics, and more can be used to help improve production operations. Now you can access the report via the link shown here. Awareness of the need for dependable cybersecurity protections at manufacturing companies of all sizes has by now reached most everyone in industry. And separating the leaders and the laggards in this area are distinctions such as the level of cybersecurity protections in place, the strength of related corporate policies and procedures, and the amount of interaction between IT and operations technology departments. But for many companies, the questions they're often still asking themselves are things like, am I secure enough? Should I be doing more? Is it possible to have too much cybersecurity? So to help answer these questions, Automation World connected with Brandon Boley of Interstates, which is an industrial system integration company, for a recent episode of the Automation World Get Your Questions Answered podcast series. Now, as Brandon and I began our discussion, he noted that a lot has changed on the industrial cybersecurity front since the emergence of COVID-19. He said that once COVID-19 hit and organizations decided that they were going to start sending their employees to work from home more, they've actually had to move forward and start implementing remote access policies. Now, a lot of organizations had been in talks of doing something like this, but COVID really forced their hand to actually start it. Ole explained that this means more manufacturing companies have lately been coming to grips with how to securely access and, su and to support their production machinery remotely for themselves and for the other companies they work with, such as OEMs and system integrators. Now, currently, the way most companies are doing this is through the use of virtual private networks to cross the firewall that separates the control system environment from the corporate environment. Another method that Brandon mentioned that he sees in use quite a lot, quite often, is the use of a jump server placed in what's referred to as the DMZ or demilitarized zone, which is a subnetwork containing an organization's outward facing services that outside parties are allowed to log into and do all of their work in rather than the protect protected areas of the network. Now, explaining what he considers to be the basic cybersecurity protections any industrial company should have in place today, Brandon said that at a minimum, the first thing that you're going to want to do is to create some sort of policy to help define what needs to be happening with cybersecurity in your operations. This policy creates your direction for how the whole organization needs to flow as it pertains to cybersecurity. 
Now getting into the technical control aspects, Brandon says to be sure to address the basics like putting in a firewall to separate your manufacturing network from your business network, and of course installing antivirus protections. He also stresses conducting regular patches or updates for your systems and of course doing backups. He said that doing those basic cybersecurity practices is really the most important thing that you need to do today. But once a company has these basic measures in place, what are the next steps they should take to continually ensure that their cyber defenses remain strong? Now here, Brandon explains the value of risk assessments, getting buy-in at both the management and operator levels, and avoiding common mistakes he sees many manufacturing companies still making. Now, to hear all of Brandon's insights on these points, listen to the podcast episode via the URL shown here. In March 2019, Volkswagen and Siemens announced the creation of Volkswagen's Industrial Cloud, which was developed jointly with Amazon Web Services using the Siemens MindSphere IoT platform. Now, according to the Volkswagen Group, the company sees this project as, quote, laying the foundation for the seamless digitalization of its production and logistics that would include the integration of Volkswagen's global supply chain with more than 30,000 locations of its more than 1,500 suppliers and partner companies. Now, the industrial cloud is set up to provide a means for Volkswagen's technology partners to upload apps that meet Volkswagen's requirements that its plants can then download and put into use to improve their production operations. So, essentially, once cleared for use in the industrial cloud, these apps can be downloaded and then applied much like consumers download apps from an app store. Now, some of the applications that have already been created for VW's industrial cloud include an algorithm using artificial intelligence to calculate requirements for driverless transport systems used in plant logistics operations, software for optimizing plant efficiency using overall equipment effectiveness, and an application for generating a digital twin in the cloud to simulate the capacity deployment and maintenance intervals of machines without intervening in the physical production processes. And to read more about this, visit the URL shown here. So, I hope you found this episode of Technology Matters interesting, and that you'll check out these and other posts at automationworld.com. And if you haven't yet subscribed to our channel, please take a moment to do so now by clicking on the AWTV logo on the bottom right-hand side of your screen. So, with that, we'll see you soon with the next installment of Automation World's Technology Matters. Mm -hmm.